Hey friends, this is Laura with Papori of Life and there's black flies, so if I'm always swatting me myself, that's the reason. Today what I'm doing is I'm catching up on some laundry. My clothes, clothing is all caught up, but these here are some sheets that my massage therapist gave me. And she donates them to me after she's used them for a number of times. And she, she gives them to me washed, they're always clean, but because I can still smell the essential oils on them and stuff, I put them through my washer with OxyClean and vinegar so that they get a good clean out. Now I use old sheets or extra sheets, whatever I can find. Sometimes I can find um, flat sheets and stuff at thrift stores, but it's been a while since I've been up there. What I'm doing right now is I'm going through my own stuff, but I also received a bag of these um, last week and I had another bag of hers that I needed to process. So I needed to get away from <laughs> these black flies. Hold on a minute. Hey friends, this is Laura with Papori of Life. This is part two because I was outside getting chased and bitten by black flies. <laughs> Nasty little buggers. And God created them. I don't know why, but he created them for a reason. For me, it seems like they just like to bite. So this year it seems like they're worse than before and I don't recall why. Um, I used to wear essential oils and stuff like that and I'm not sure if it's because I've changed something in my diet or changed some of the things I'm using holistically because that's very possible. I change things up all the time but they're just out there. But my husband did say, and this is more likely truth as well, we got all this rain in New Hampshire and you know where we had like flooding in the back and stuff which I did share. and. With that come the black flies. They like water. They like places where it's just moist. So that's why they might be here. After this season passes, which will be a couple of weeks, my husband says, and then the mosquitoes will come in. I mean, can my husband give me anything more encouraging? <laughs> but we do have, I did spray outside with some, uh, a spray that keeps ticks at bay but also it should help other bugs and stuff. And I've got marigolds, they're not up yet. I'm praying that God has them pop so that they help with the mosquitoes as well. But there's a lot of things that you can do to help hold back on the mosquito population, or at least we try. So why am I saving sheets? It, my massage therapist gives me sheets when I go in to see her. Not every visit, but this visit and the last visit, she gave me a couple big bags. And in, in them are like maybe five sets of sheets, fitted and top, about twin size, because that's what she puts on the massage beds. And so when she asked me, Laura, could you use these? She goes, some of them are ripped. And I said, yeah, I can. And what I'm doing with them, and I can use them for a variety of things. Some things I can do is like cut them up into rags. You guys have seen that video where I make rags. Those are kind of things that I can use the sheets for, most especially the flannel ones that she might give me. I like dusting with flannel. And you can also use them for regular napkins and so forth. What I'm doing with the sheets is I'm going to be weaving. But I wanted to show you a few things that I do. Like some of the things that I've done is um, I was going through some of the clothes my father-in-law had and some of the things I've I'm tossing because they were so worn. My father-in-law loved his clothes to the point where they really shouldn't have been worn, but that's, you know, that's his generation. You wear it until it's no good. And there were some that I could cut on the back of his leg because you don't wear out the back leg of your jeans. So he had a pair of shorts here and they were in good repair. And um, so I, I checked and they were too big for my husband. So I just cut it down to be able to use. Now, why would I not have donated it? because I work with denim. I make denim quilts, I make um, denim totes, I make a variety of things with denim. So if the family doesn't need it, I will use it. The other things I have made, and these were waffle weave fabric, and you can also, also get these in washcloths, like at Walmart or something. And they don't always come in consistent sizes because this was one, and this other one is a little bit larger. So I'm on, always on the lookout, although this, I think it depends on how you place it. On the back, though, are old bath towels. 
You see, I don't like seeing things get thrown away. So some of the bath towels, they might have been worn on the edges. I just work around them and I make these napkins. Now, these are also used for like cleaning and stuff. And I usually don't use them for cleaning at first because when they're first done, they're so pretty. But these are starting to get rat ratty. So I'm going to be making more um, we call them napkins because we like the double-sided. If you're eating something like popcorn, you get a little bit of butter on you if you put butter on it or um, anything like that. If you're eating chicken, you know, barbecue chicken or anything, it just, this is just really a nice napkin, very different than any of the other napkins I have. So we use this all the time. We'll put it on our lap in the living room if we're having something to eat or we'll put it on the kitchen table to have when we're having a bowl of cereal or a, you know a bowl a plate of eggs and stuff so they get used a lot so they're getting worn out and these are about two years old the waffle weave was new the towel was used and they are surviving and these are still good so we'll still use these for a while but I will be making more another thing that I do with some of it um, my stuff is like this was some leftover fabric from curtains that I made and I had a little bit of flannel and I just because I lined my kitchen curtains with flannel. I don't put these curtains up anymore because my husband doesn't really like it and I thought they were cute. Oh well. And um, so these are kind of like I made them so that when I, I had a friend who used to come over and we'd have tea and these are great because you put it down and then if I made cookies or something there's space for the cookies. That's why I made them. I guess I'm kind of odd. I'm not the typical. So what am I doing with these sheets? I'm actually going to be weaving and I was so excited about it because I've been wanting to do this for a couple of years and in the fall before my father-in-law passed my husband made me a couple of weaving units that I asked him to make. I had it all planned out. I saw somebody else doing it and I said that's kind of what I'm looking for. So we got the materials. I went out and bought it. I said this is what I want and so this is what it looks like. This is the placemat size and I know it looks huge but that's what I'm going to use and if it's too big that's okay because I can use it for like if you're serving a casserole or a turkey dinner you can put it on there for that so I'm using oh and another one that he made me was for like a rug that would fit right in front of my kitchen sink this one might also be a perfect size for a bathroom rug so We'll see how this all comes along, but I'm really excited about trying this because I've got all the sheets hung, drying outside, and I had others that I washed, and they're all folded and ready to go. You don't need tons, but you need quite, you know, you need a handful of them to get started because you've got to weave one way and weave the other, and I'm looking forward to doing this. Now, in saying that, some people, to do the waft, I think that's what it's called, where you go up and down, some people use string. I don't have string but I have fabric so I kind of did a little bit more research and you can do it also with fabric sheets being the best now these sheets aren't perfect remember they've been used over and over again washed over and over again because every time she has a client she washes them every single time and it just makes the whole experience so much more enjoyable and relaxing which is what a massage is supposed to do and so it's really beneficial for me to have those massages but on the plus side it's really kind of cool that she knows that I love to sew she knows that I can figure out something to use different things with and I've I've mended some things for her and we've bartered and back and forth so I'm really looking forward to this because I'm looking forward to seeing how this comes out and I know it's going to work out really fine. You know what the really nice thing about sewing, I'll say with sewing, what I used to do when I had my clients that I was working for, as I did the stitching, a lot of times there was some handwork, but at the sewing machine too, I would pray for them. Whether they are a Christian or not is not relevant because God hears our prayers no matter who we're praying for. And so as I was getting ready to do this, I'm like, this is a perfect opportunity to talk to God about what's going on in our lives. There's a lot of stuff going on still with us in terms of the estate and some other um, family dynamics and stuff. 
but I actually believe that God has a plan for all this. And I have to be transparent. This morning was really tough because my husband has been spending a lot of time over there as well as attending to his work needs. And so I kind of lost it. And I said, I'm really sorry, honey. I'm just so wiped out. It's not that I can't do the work that I'm doing and I'm actually having fun doing this. It, it's very rewarding because it's been years since, I was, since prior to finally being diagnosed with Lyme disease. It's been years. So this energy that I have has been so fulfilling. The joy that I have is so fulfilling. But you know what? Just because you have the energy and just because your pain situations are reducing, just because things are good, doesn't mean you don't have times where life is tough. Life, you feel overwhelmed. And I have nothing to complain about. Well, I guess I could, but I don't want to. And I did complain to God today, though. I had to talk to him. Then I had to ask forgiveness. <laughs> and then I had to receive his mercy and grace. Because you see, Jesus, God, is our Heavenly Father. Just like we are parents to our children, it's so amazing, we want the best for our children. God wants the best for us. We are His children. Our children get mad at us, we get mad at God. You see, we're human beings and we get frustrated. And I've been told by some people, you should never be angry at God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right, I shouldn't. But you know what, I'm also human. And I never deny that. And God knows I try every single day. But the reason I'm being transparent is because I've heard from a few of you that have said sometimes it's really hard. It is, folks. It's really hard to be a Christian, to be loving 100% of the time, to be thankful 100% of the time, to just, you know, be pain-free, all that stuff. Because sometimes we just get tired. And that's why it's really important, very important, that we try to get our rest. But more importantly, make sure we take time in His Word to be, um, to be revived, to be able to give us inspiration. Because many times when I read the Scriptures, I read something and it's like, Oh yeah! Or something I've read before and it's like, Oh, that's awesome! Those things, I could spend hours reading in the scriptures, but I have work to do too, and God understands that, but just taking time and saying, thank you, Jesus, giving him time, whether it's one chapter at a time, whether it's one verse at a time, every little bit that you give him and is actually rewarding. So I wanted to be honest with you. I had a rough start to my day, and I couldn't sleep because of some of the dynamics that are on my mind, but I also believe that there is an end to some of this. And I think he's using me in a way that I've never been used before. And I'm really grateful. So what I wanted to share was about the weaving. I wanted to share that part of the reason I'm looking forward to it is I get to pray for whatever God puts on my heart during that time. That's pretty cool. Now, say it's taken a long time. I could actually watch TV if I wanted to, if I had TV. Let me think about this. I could put a video, a DVD, into the player thingy. <laughs> I don't watch it that often. Usually we watch something like that when we're home together and stuff. And But that will give me an opportunity to use, you know, to kind of keep going through. Because I'm one that always has to keep busy. So I look forward to sharing with you how my weaving is coming along. And I'm looking forward to doing it. Folks, I hope that you are finding something, just something little even, that brings you joy. If, if it's raining out and you want to go dance in the rain, do it. Who cares if anybody sees you? If you want to spend time in the sun soaking up the rays, do it. Because you know what? Those rays are actually giving you vitamin D, natural vitamin D from God. If you want to go play in the garden or play in the dirt, do it. Take time to enjoy the things that bring you joy. In the, mean, in the same token, don't forget who God is 
don't forget how he wants to provide for us. He not only wants to provide a roof over our head, clothes on our back, food in our bellies. He wants to provide joy and he wants to provide us the opportunity to realize how much he cares for us. He didn't say it was going to be easy and it's not. But he does say he will never let you down. Folks, I hope that you're having a great day. I hope you find something that'll be fun to do, even if it's sitting back and reading a book. Because you know what? I miss my time reading books, but I have so much going on. So I think I need to take a day a week and read a couple of hours. We'll see. Okay, I keep going off on tangents. Folks, I hope you have a great night, and I hope that you are well. May God bless you.